Neutralize the objective. Since beer and liquor were important gods back in college and you had to pay for them somehow, I worked in a video rental store. Along with every conceivable copy of VHS known in existence, the store also rented and sold pornographic features. I lasted maybe five months at this place. The porn wasn't too bad as you get desensitized to it after a while. It was the fucking creeps that perused the shelves that really made my skin crawl. One such gentleman was a walking stereotype and a mouth breather of epic proportions. Every time he entered the store, you could hear him before you actually saw him. Uh, to my recollection, he was about six feet tall and a bit pudgy. He had a thin graying mustache similar to John Waters, the director, and he was edging on baldness. His gait was uh, perplexing as well, and he walked like either one leg was shorter than the other or he had been hit by a car at some point in his life. The icing on the cake was the cartoonish and thick lensed glasses that enlarged his beady eyes. I always panicked when I saw him because he was the sort of person that you'd expect to have corpses buried in his backyard. To make matters worse, his voice was chilling, like deep and off-putting, and uh, he was constantly mumbling to himself. And you know, that could be problematic at times because he never made eye contact, so I could never be sure if he was actually speaking to me or to the voices in his head. Anyway, in case you couldn't gather from those prearranged clues, Mouth Breather was a definite porn buyer. He would shuffle around in the back room behind those dusty black curtains for upwards of an hour, which would almost always culminate in a really skanky, trashy Asian porno. Um, every so often he'd poke his rounded body out from the depths and wander around the regular section for a minute or two, but uh, he would usually then disappear again with a thick gasp of that mouth air. He was always afraid to encounter the register, which was just the shitty computer with the non-electric cash box, um, particularly whenever there was other customers in the store. So with his Asian porn in hand, he would, you know, wander around with his one good leg, faking interest in comedies while these older ladies rented out steel magnolias or fried green tomatoes. I'd always wondered what the fuck was up with him, and I guess he may have just been a socially awkward creature without an internet connection, but I always wondered if there was some seriously evil shit trapped within that unfortunate hide of his. My mind would always wander on slow days when he was the only one in the store in that back room, and I would have strange daydreams of the kind of weapon he was carrying. Was it a knife that day? Maybe some kind of pistol? Fuck, maybe even a bomb? But either way, it was always a relief when he left the store. I always figured that he would struggle for five minutes trying to get into a Dodge Durango with that busted leg of his, only to spend the next two and a half hours driving back into Maryland with some teenage kid tied up in his trunk. I'd always imagine that he would pull up to some abandoned paper mill with a single solitary light dangling from the ceiling with a small 1990s Toshiba television with a built-in VH player in the corner and he would just toss this victim like a rag doll onto these garbage bags full of newspapers. And, you know, once there, he would carve off hunks of that poor kid and slowly chew them down, all the while this Asian porn cried in the background. Fortunately, he eventually stopped coming in altogether. Was he a murderer or a pedophile or anything like that? I sure as hell don't know. Most likely, he just got sick and tired of the 20-something video clerk giving him the shit eye every time he entered the store.